uh, Mr. Uh, Brett Dufer. He is the author of the uh, Katie Trail Guidebook as well as several other books, um, the Katie Trail Nature Guide and uh, the uh, Guide to Missouri Wine Country. Um, he's written quite a lot of content on uh, Missouri and Katie Trails and he knows just about as much or more uh, about trails here in Missouri as anybody I know. So I'm going to give him a chance to introduce himself, talk about his work, and uh, we'll go from there. Go for it, Brett. Hey, Tim. Tim, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate what you're doing here to help build the community. So thanks. I really appreciate this opportunity. Yeah, so uh, I live in Roachport, smack dab in the middle of the Katy Trail. And for years and years at this point, I've been writing different guidebooks to different Missouri destinations. I always call them sort of like history books with directions. As anybody that's ridden the Katy Trail knows, or that's toured through wine country knows, or that's traveled the Lewis and Clark Trail. There's, there's history under every footstep. And so what I try to do is collect some of those stories to enrich people's uh, experience when they're out and about exploring our amazing state. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And you know, one of the things I've noticed about just kind of going through your guidebook, how much, um, cause I think I've heard you kind of talk in the past how you had gotten started reading other guidebooks that you'd kind of gotten into some other guidebooks and that had been kind of an inspiration for you. Do you want to talk about kind of where your inspiration came from and how you kind of started doing the guidebook thing? Absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, what, back when I was in uh, college, I was backpacking my way down through uh, Latin America. I um, ended up staying in Mexico for a semester, backpacking down through Central America, um, doing my junior year in Costa Rica. So, I mean, I just always had a guidebook in my hand and so it just felt really natural for me. And at the same time, especially in Costa Rica, I was seeing this concept called ecotourism, which is sort of like highlighting the natural beauty that's already here, helping people break down barriers to exploring it and things like that. And so when I got back to Missouri, it seemed like a real no brainer to kind of like take some of that, that those guidebook thoughts and try to share my love and enthusiasm of this river valley with people uh, as a rider and uh, obviously as a cyclist. I'm also a big river guy. I paddle like crazy all the time. And so um, it just, I'm from Kansas City originally um, and it just still, I'm in awe that there's so much to explore literally right in our own backyard. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't think it's any coincidence that like here we've got the world's longest rails to trails project, the Katy Trail. And then of course we've also got the longest nonstop ultra marathon kayak race in the world in the MR340. Like right. there's so much awesomeness in our own backyard. And um, I hope that I'm able to share my enthusiasm for these places through these guidebooks to help get people out. Yeah. Well, and you know, you talk about, about history and I've looked through um, a, a lot of the, uh, the stories. And one of the things I really appreciate about your guidebook, you know, I think you use the term um, ecotourism and kind of and touring nature and, and things like that. But this is, you know, some of your books are almost like, you know, like community tourism, like let's get used to, or let's get to know some of the people that live in some of these areas and, and Rocheport, which is currently your hometown, right? Yeah. Yeah. You've got quite a bit of really interesting content about, about Rocheport and about, uh, about some of the history there, um, the history of the trail itself. And I'm actually having a hard time finding it right now, but there was one specific story you were telling about one of the, the tunnels um, and kind of the history of, uh, of that area that, um, it's just really fascinating, especially if you want to know about what, um, what Missouri was like, you know, the last 200 years during, um, kind of that transition from trail or not trail, but rail, the rail phase of, of, uh, the United States during the industrial revolution up to when that's kind of transitioned into the Katy trail now, which is, you know, bikes and cycling and, and that kind of tourism. And you cover so much of that. And I find that really interesting that, uh, that you get kind of that blend of those two. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. I kind of think of the Katy trail as like, uh, Missouri's longest welcome mat, you know, um, mm -hmm. and, and in another metaphor I use sometimes is this idea that it's uh, like a timeline right out of a history book. Uh, you were just talking about the tunnel that's here in Roachport, mm -hmm. um, which is one of the most scenic, most photographed spots on the whole Katy Trail. And it was while I was first writing this Katy Trail guidebook back in 1995, I was there at the tunnel at dusk. There was some local riding their bike through. It was like golden hour. Um, it just absolutely set a hook and just reeled me in. 
And so, like you said, just even from that one spot, you've got Lewis and Clark's journal entry talking about finding the first uh, example of Mozarchite, which was like this red, blue, and white type of chert or flint. Um, and then you've got like the railroad story of that tunnel being built back in 1893. Mm -hmm. um, and then you've got like the story of a Stephen King movie being filmed in that tunnel called Sometimes They Come Back, which mm -hmm. is super cheesy, but it's cool to see that tunnel in so many yeah. shots. And then <laughs> awesome. in 1993, we've got like three feet of water in that tunnel. So it's like, it yeah. just, uh, the stories just keep building and building and building. And that's just one little spot on the whole trail. Right. Um, and so I think the trick is trying to find that happy balance between it is a guidebook for cyclists. Um, Heck, I've met people on the trail that are literally tearing pages out as they go down the trail to like mm -hmm. lighten the load, which is great. Um, <laughs> so it's meant to be used, and I also have to keep it uh, to 192 pages because you, if this thing was 300 pages long, you know nobody would stick right. it in their painting and hit the trail with it. Right. So I try to do the best I can uh, with the space I've got, and uh, so I was super excited to get our 11th edition out. Um, just a few months ago. Mm -hmm. um, that was super exciting, a huge labor of love. I had planned to do it a few years earlier, but as anybody else that remembers uh, 2019, we had the flood year, it was freaking nuts. And I mm -hmm. thought, oh, well, I'll do it next year when nothing's going on. And then 2020 rolls around. And then of course the last two years has been a super challenge um, with COVID and everything else. Yeah. Um, and it's been super tough on these little trail side shops and merchants heck just down the hill here uh merryweather cafe i'm sure a lot of your um, listeners have been there it's a mm -hmm. great little cafe on the trail heck they turned over ownership multiple multiple times just oh. in the last few years and so i'm super excited about 2022 because i think this is finally the season that all these merchants have been building up to for quite some time mm -hmm. and uh, there's just kind of never been a better time to get out all the forecasts look great low river year i mean like this is the sweet spot so i hope everybody gets a chance to get out and explore the trail this year yeah i do too and you know i, I think one of the things that uh because you mentioned kind of briefly how uh katie trail is missouri's kind of welcome mat to other cities there's a lot of trail tourism around the katie trail right now and i you know you mentioned how um COVID has really slowed a lot of things down, but you know, one of the things, other things COVID has done is it's created this boom in the cycling community. Exactly. And, and outdoor, yeah. honestly, outdoor communities as a whole, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I can see how, you know, for small towns and stuff like that with the Katy Trail being there, I'm already seeing some of this even starting at the end of last year wow. where people are, you know, I'm, I got in touch with a guy from Chicago who was said, you know, how can I get on the Katy trail? Like what's the best way to fly into KCI, uh, the airport here in Kansas city and, and then get to the Katy trail. And I was talking yeah. to him like how, how to make that happen, how to work that. And, you know, with that kind of development and outdoor, uh, cycling, especially has kind of really grown mm -hmm. that that can ha have a big impact on some of those small towns. And, you're going to see a lot of people, I think, out on the trail, especially this year. So, Oh, yeah, absolutely. You couldn't be more correct. I think last year it was like record numbers of people on the trail. What a blessing because everybody needed that uh, experience to get outdoors. And I think the other thing that we're seeing, too, is also like the uh, the explosion of like e-bike usage. Yeah. And so well, there's a whole other layer of people that maybe are able to get out, access the trail more readily. Uh, maybe put in more miles on the trail. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of like, um, it's just like, it just keeps getting better. So yeah. it's super exciting. And I know that many naturalists from throughout history talk about that, like the more advanced the society becomes, the more important locations like the Katy Trail are, where you can just hopefully unplug, just absorb nature, be out there and, and enjoy all that peace and quiet. And I mean, the trail continues to deliver uh, on the, um, the hopes, dreams, and promises of the founder from 25 years ago, yeah. 30 years ago. And so we're so lucky to have this in our backyard. And um, it has really helped resurrect so many small towns along the way in the process. Roachport mm -hmm. is a perfect example of that. Um, and so really for people coming out, maybe this is their first time on the Katy Trail. Uh, there's more and more services, more campgrounds, more bed and breakfasts, more shuttle services. Mm -hmm. um, it's now's the now's the year to get out there and get after it yeah so grab a katie trail guidebook and 
<laughs> go and a bike and, and get going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and I'll tell you, I have to laugh because like, who who would need a guidebook to a trail that is straight and flat? I mean, it's like nobody. But I will quickly add, right? You have to delete that out later. I'm kidding. But like, the truth of the matter is, like, um, anybody planning a trip, like, I talk to people coming from California, and they've got like one week of vacation, and they're like, "Are we going to Hawaii, or are we gonna go ride bikes in Missouri?" And yeah. it's like, if we don't give them all the information they need in some readily digestible format at the right time, they're going to go vacation somewhere else. And so that's the thing that continues to surprise me is uh, the need for a, a simple guidebook. Now, you mentioned directions from the KCI airport. Perfect example. Uh, people coming in from all over the place, never been to Missouri. And yeah. you know what? They're coming for the first time because of the Katy Trail. Right. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. 